Good morning, all of you. I'm Dr. Kanish Mehta, Associate Professor in Department of ENT and Head and Neck Surgery, American International Institute of Medical Sciences, Udaipur. In our previous video, we have seen the entire setup of audiology room and how a pure tone audiogram is being conducted. Today, we are going to see some common audiograms. What do we interpret out of those audiograms and what are the diagnoses that we will have to keep in our minds when we see such kind of audiograms in our practice. Before we see what the audiogram is, I would like to show you the common nomenclature and coding that we use for an audiogram. The first important thing is we use a red pen to, de decode, uh, the, to code the right side. We remember it as R for R. So red color is for right side, blue color is for left side. The air conduction and bone conduction is also having a specific nomenclature all across uh, the audiology. We use the air conduction as a, a circle on the right side, as you can see, whereas bone conduction is shown with an arrow which is open towards the right. So bone conduction is shown with an arrow towards the right. Whereas in the left ear, we use air conduction with a cross, whereas bone conduction is shown with an arrow which is open towards the left. This is the common nomenclature for an unmasked audiogram that we do in our OPD basis. Now, as per WHO guidelines, above 25 decibel is considered normal hearing. So, any graph that you will see where the lines are above 25 decibel, it is considered as a normal hearing. So, this, audio, this audiogram, if you see, is showing a normal audiogram of a healthy individual. So this person is able to hear properly. Now I am going to show you some other common audiograms then we will discuss about the pathologies. This audiogram is showing a dip in the bone conduction as well as a dip in the air conduction but there is no gap between the air conduction and the bone conduction. So this is very classical of sensory neural hearing loss in both the ears. The average is around 65 decibels and this is very classical of press by acusis or bilateral sensory neural, neural hearing loss. Of course, we don't know the age of the patient here, but a classical press by acusis will present with this kind of audiogram. This audiogram also shows a, a, a fall in the pathway without an airborne gap. The air conduction and bone conduction is showing a dip. The dip is very classically seen at 4000 Hz, which is very commonly encountered in noise induced hearing loss. So people working in factories or exposure to loud sounds will come to you with this kind of audiogram. So a dip at 4000 Hz without any airborne gap, a sensory hearing loss suggestive of noise induced hearing loss. This is another interesting audiogram which is showing that there is no response. These arrows below the, below the air conduction and bone conduction, these arrows mean that the that patient is showing no response even at the highest possible sound given for bone conduction and air conduction. That means the person is having deafness even beyond this level. This means bilateral profound deafness and these are the candidates who are ideal for cochlear implant on audiological basis. So audiological criteria if you remember for cochlear implant is bilateral profound hearing loss. So this is the audiogram we will see in profound hearing loss. Now this is another interesting audiogram very commonly seen in our OPDs where one ear is showing absolutely normal air conduction and bone conduction whereas the other ear is showing a dip in the air conduction but a normal bone conduction and a large air bone gap. This is classical of conductive hearing loss. So this patient will be labeled as a normal left ear whereas conductive hearing loss in the right ear. Now the causes for this conductive hearing loss could be secretory otitis media, 
सुपुरेटिव ओटाइटिस मीडिया ओटोस्क्लेरोसिस और ऑसिकुलर फिक्सेशन ऑसिकुलर डिसकंटिन्यूटी सो मेनी कॉजेज वी नो वी हैव फॉर कंडक्टिव हियरिंग पाथवे डिफेक्ट्स बट on audiological basis we will label it only as conductive hearing loss we will have to correlate it clinically to find out the exact cause for this conductive hearing loss i am sure you all will be already clear with this kind of audiogram which is showing a fall in the air conduction a good air bone gap and a dip at 2000 hertz which is often called as karhart's notch I would like to tell all my students that Karhart's notch is diagnostic of otosclerosis or stapes fixation but not all otosclerosis will show Karhart's notch some cases of otosclerosis may also show a normal conductive hearing loss may not show necessarily a case of dipping at 2000 hertz this dip at 2000 hertz is seen in stapes fixation because the normal resonance of stapes is 2000 hertz malleus and incus is a little less so you may be able to see a dip at lower frequency in case of malleolar or inquidal fixation this is another common audiogram we see where there is ear bone gap as well as there is dip in the bone pathway or bone conduction which is commonly called as mixed type of hearing loss now before i close this video i want to tell all my students that in the audiometry this axis shows decibels or the intensity of the sound whereas this axis shows frequency in hertz that is the 125 250 500 or 1000 hertz whereas this is decibel now commonly when we ask the students that what is 0 decibel and minus 10 how can we give sound less than 0 decibel i want to tell you that this 0 decibel does not mean no sound it means that when majority of the people were examined normal individuals were examined this was the average minimum hearing that means let's say if 100 people were examined majority of them for them this particular decibel sound was the bare minimum some of them could also have heard lesser or better than that that means even at minus 10 and minus 20 so zero means there is sound given but that is the basic minimum frequency that a normal individual can hear all right this does not mean no sound is being given so this is hearing threshold level that means when a sample study is being taken then maximum individuals can hear the minimum sound of 0 decibel all right so i hope you all have understood this all the best for exams